all our technology and machines. We live so far from nature, most of us. And that is our original source of enchantment. There was a time when the trees spoke and we had totem animals and the world around us was alive. Even in this age of enormous rationality, um, since the Age of Enlightenment. Yeah. And we've benefited greatly, of course, by moving away from superstition, let's say in medicine, you know, to be able to stop bloodletting, you know, as a primary <laughs> <laughs> tool of, you know, treatment and expanding science into all of these areas. And yet we've lost something that the world used to be enchanted mm. and our rationality has disenchanted our lives ah. in some ways that's helped us of course and yet what is it that people are hoping for to be right there in the path of this total eclipse mm-hmm. and what what i think we were saying is the possibility of the re-enchantment of at least those eight minutes that that the universe can be spectacular, amazing, um, be full of feeling rather than just full of thinking. Mm-hmm. Now, I think um, you've really hit on something very important. I like your word enchantment of the feelings of awe and wonder and dread and all that. And it takes me to the dance, you know, what is the dance between uh, science and enchantment, wonder, awe, feeling, being part of something greater. Because if we reduce everything to a series of calculations of, you know, here's the path, um, and here's the time that the eclipse will be there in your area, um, uh, to a hilltop near you. Uh, <laughs> it, it's utter. It's simply science. It's simply fact of versus the feeling of enchantment of i i am part of something greater i am part of a mystery uh and we want to feel awe wonder mystery we want that feeling and i think science and all our technology and machines we live so far from nature most of us And that is our original source of enchantment. There was a time when the trees spoke and we had totem animals and the world was, the world around us was alive. And we have memories of this, you know, as as children, the fact that children play with dolls. And when we're Mm -hmm. very, very young, we have a, a feeling of certainty. Your doll needs to be fed, or it needs to be tucked in next to you. That that your doll is has feelings yeah. in some fashion. I mean, that's that primary instinct inside of us to ensoul the world around us and mm-hmm. to make it in some way responsive to humanity. And I think with the idea of the doll, that these seemingly inanimate objects also need things from us. And so one of the things that Jung writes about is that when he was in his investigations and meeting with various shaman, he had a conversation with one who said that part of the responsibility of the tribe was to help the sun rise Mm -hmm. each morning and that something catastrophic would likely happen. Very much the way a child thinks, oh, my doll needs to be fed and kept warm and needs to be tended. Mm -hmm. And that's another side of that miraculous magic that people feel, that not only are we reliant on the sun, the sun may be reliant Mm -hmm. on us. And there are some accounts in ancient manuscripts that during an eclipse, uh, people might fire arrows 
yes. into the eclipse because some demonic force was mm-hmm. attacking the sun and everyone in the tribe needed to, to help defend the integrity and the life of the sun. Yes, there's, there are accounts of that. And of course, there are so many myths uh, around the world of uh, the sun being eaten mm-hmm. during an eclipse of by a, a dragon or a frog or a jaguar. Or uh, the, I think there's quite a list of something, the sun being devoured, mm. uh, an image of, of the light, of, of consciousness, life itself and uh, that that we are in relationship to it you know that if you you'll you'll go out and try to defend against it you'll shoot arrows to kill the demon that has swallowed the sun of that is living in an ensouled world and I, I don't think it's possible to have an ensouled relationship with an iPad uh, or, or a phone or social media. I, somehow I think those things um, lack the inherent capacity of imagination and wonder uh, uh, versus something like this eclipse, which calls so many people to an experience of of wonder and awe and feeling part of. We need a relationship. That's what it boils down to. We need a relationship with with the world and with our own souls, feeling part of, feeling touched, feeling connected. And I think as you're talking about needing the relationship, is that we need a true encounter, not mm-hmm. the fantasy of an encounter. Oh, that's exactly. So, I mean, people have these internet affairs with people that they've never met through emails or texting, which is the fantasy of a relationship or the fantasy of an encounter, yeah. even the fantasy of the eclipse. Yes. So I understand that people, they want to drive to that first date with the moon. You know, <laughs> they're just texting. Texting the moon is not going to really cut it. You've got to yeah. drive down to Texas. And you've got to meet the experience head on. And then, as you were saying, Deb, through the lived experience, that's where the relationship is, is possible, as it is between two people. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about this idea of um, eating. A couple of little fun facts. Uh, the Chinese uh, ideogram for the eclipse is the same ideogram for the word eat. Uh-huh. So I, I think there's something very, uh-huh. very alive in that image of the moon impinging on the sunlight um, and to fantasize that something dark and mysterious is taking bites out of the sun until it's just a crescent. And then finally, is simply a, a black circle ringed with fire. Mm-hmm. And uh, a- another sort of fact that I uncovered is that because of uh, the size of our moon and the sun and its distance from the earth, uh, we have the opportunity to see a total eclipse. That, that um, the Sun can be completely blocked out by the moon, which is 400 times bigger. That is, you know, some 400 uh, light years away from the sun. But the math works out perfectly that it wouldn't be a total eclipse unless the distances and sizes of sun, moon, and earth uh, made it possible. So who knows? We may be somewhat unique. Um, at least in this universe, and even being able to have uh, a total eclipse. Uh, so I'm curious as to the psychological parallels um, in what gets eclipsed in us. 
how, when do we experience an eclipse with uh, the sun as the solar principle of light and consciousness? And it's long been a symbol of light and consciousness. And then comes the night when things are dark and things slither around in the dark. And uh, that's long been a symbol for the unconscious. Mm -hmm. 